Day on Rampler. With, with the Lima there, I don't think it, we can expect a fair trial. An anti-communist party list representative tells Fugitive General Jovito Palparan, stay in hiding. The Philippine government uses Facebook photos as proof to fire an employee. Philippine basketball player says on Twitter, PBA games are fixed. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Anti-communist party list representative Pastor Alcover Jr. supports Fugitive General Jovito Palparan, who was charged with the abduction of two University of the Philippines students. Alcover says it's better for Palparan to stay in hiding. He cites the controversial arrest of 43 community medical workers known as Morong 43, whom the military claims are communist guerrillas. Yes, um, Justice Secretary Leila de Lima filed cases against the generals the, uh, who arrested the group. With, with the Lima there, I don't think it, we can expect a fair trial. Pina release yung Murong 43, pinala ng kaso yung mga generals na nahumuli sa Murong 43. So what can you expect from that? Wala. He adds, quote, this government is being influenced by the communists. Alcover names political advisor Ronaldo Llamas and National Anti-Poverty Commission Chief Joel Roc Rocamora among the so-called communists in government. Alcover claims the military and the police support Palparan. Arroyo ally Quezon Representative Danilo Suarez lists the achievements and failures of President Aquino three weeks before the President's State of the Nation address. Suarez says, if not for the president's honesty, the government would have collapsed long ago. But the House Minority Leader also calls on President Aquino to stop his supposed persecution of former President Gloria Arroyo and recognize her administration's contributions to the economic growth. Suarez lists the Aquino administration's shortcomings, which include cutting off public spending, lack of transparency in its conditional cash transfer program, increasing prices of commodities, perpetuation of corruption despite anti-corruption slogans, growing peace and order problems, and the failure of illegal drugs campaign after the Philippines was named one of the three top Asian countries producing amphetamine-type drugs. Suarez says the minority will present a contra sona after July 23. Though I have no doubt, a yield of doubt on the honesty and sincerity of the president on his program, it's not enough. You have to be determined, you have to be sharp, you have to be ruthless, both to your enemies and to your friends. And you can make you witness to my Police and activists clash over the murder of a Dutch missionary shot and killed in Pampanga Tuesday. Activists say Wilhelm Gertman was killed for helping oppressed farmers in central Luzon. Local police, though, say he was killed for money. Geertman was the executive director of Alay Bayan Luzon Inc., a group holding com helping communities in disaster management. He was also an anti-mining and environmental activist. Geertman reportedly assists farmers of Hacienda Luisita, a controversial estate owned by President Benigno Aquino III's family. ABI Chair Joseph Canlas says, reducing the case to a simple robbery may be part of a police cover-up. But police say they've established only two facts, that Geertman was shot and that he was also robbed. Initial unverified reports say Geertman was carrying 1.2 million pesos, or about 29,000 U.S. dollars, when he was killed. Police Superintendent Luisito Magnaya downplays a political motive. The Dutch embassy refuses to comment. The five-day visit of Queen Sofia of Spain is expected to boost investor interest in the Philippines. Philippine Spanish Business Council Chairman Jose Paredes La Viste says the Philippines can absorb Spanish investments seeking new markets abroad. In a speech during a state dinner for the Queen on Tuesday, President Aquino cites tangible outcomes from the Philippines' partnership with Spain.
We have bilateral trade with Spain, which last year amounted to $329.6 million, making Spain our 31st largest trading partner. Spain's official development assistance projects throughout the country have helped finance livelihood and housing programs for Filipinos at the grassroots level. After years under a repressive military junta, Myanmar's opposition lawmakers take a historic step into parliament. National League for Democracy members attend the new parliament session to discuss economic reform, foreign investment, and violence in Myanmar's western state. Opposition leader Aung San Suu Kyi said Tuesday the NLD will push for greater transparency. Suu Kyi was swept into parliament in April elections that gave her party 43 of 44 seats. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number two, the spotlight is on Republican presidential nominee Mitt Romney and his alleged $30 million in offshore accounts. The allegation raises the issue of tax evasion using offshore banks. Romney's campaign says this isn't the case, but his camp refuses to release tax returns before 2010. At number three, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad regrets the shooting of a Turkish military jet and hopes tensions between the two countries won't escalate into armed conflict. Syrian military shot down the jet on June 22 after it entered Syrian airspace. Turkey admits the incursion, but says the mistake was quickly corrected. At number eight, more than a million homes in the eastern United States are still without electricity for the fourth consecutive day following a storm that hit the region. Authorities struggle to restore power to affected homes. The National Weather Service issues extreme heat warnings with temperatures forecast to exceed 38 degrees Celsius. More than 20 people have died because of the extreme weather. And at number 10, a story to inspire. In January, Rappler multimedia reporter Natasha Gutierrez wrote about how a scholarship to the International School, or IS, helped her get a fully funded education at Yale University. Her story inspired 14-year-old Romnick Blanco, the son of a Bulacan farmer, to apply and win an IS Manila scholarship. Dreams do come true. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Asian parents spend billions of dollars for private tutoring despite doubts over its effectiveness. An Asian development bank study says it's an expanding business as parents try to give their children the best start in life. Many Asian parents see extra academic work as a constructive way for children to spend their time. Despite its popularity, tutoring has mixed results. Its effectiveness depends on the motivations and abilities of both students and tutors. The study calls for state supervision and a review of Asia's educational system. Be careful what you post on Facebook. A government employee working for the Philippine Information Agency, or PIA, found out the hard way when the government used the picture he posted on his Facebook account to fire him. Menardo Valdez closed the PIA's Nueva Ecija Information Center for four days to attend a high school reunion in Boracay. He ignored text messages and his boss's calls, but he did post a picture to show how much fun he was having at the beach. PIA Director General Jose Fabia says using Facebook this way is a first for the Philippine government. After a 99-93 loss to the power aid in the Philippines Basketball Association, Baraco Bulls center Don Aliado vents on Twitter, expressing his disappointment over the league. In a series of tweets, Aliado accuses the league of game-fixing, saying while he could accept defeat, he couldn't take, quote, losing because of referees. PBA Commissioner Chito Salud responds. They are dead. These accusations saying that the PBA is rigged, that the PBA is fixed, that we control who goes into the semis, into the finals, and who, who becomes the eventual champion, baseless, unfounded, and certainly could only come from someone who, who has lost his mind and, and uh, is clearly a sore loser. Don Aliado tweets an apology and calls his action an error in judgment. 
A United Nations expert says nations should fight against racism ahead of the Olympics to avoid a repeat of racist attacks at the Euro 2012 football championship. Football governing body UEFA says it has a zero tolerance policy towards racism and fined Russia, Spain and Croatia over fans' racist chants during matches in the Euro 2012 championship. Let's look at the mood navigator today. A wonderful day of greens. If you take a look, the top stories, quite interesting. Um, Philippines breakout nation is an economic story about the economic um, future of the Philippines, a glowing picture, 62% inspired, um, and how social media helped the dream come true. What's number 10 on the wrap, 86% inspired. If you take a look overall, money, uh, Anderson Cooper, the fact is I'm gay. This one, sex, money, sex, and dreams. All helping to bring the mood navigator to inspire. Today, most people are inspired. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Wednesday, July 4th, 2012. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.